Hi everyone, my name is Leonie and in the next 10 minutes I will introduce you to our parameter space CNN for cortical surface segmentation. As you may know, human cortical neuroimaging signals such as cortical neuroanatomical regions or a thickness are typically associated with the cortical surface and thus processing and analyzing these signals on geometric surface representations rather than in a regular voxel grid has the advantage of staying true to the underlying anatomy. As an example on um, the voxel grid depicted here on the left, the pixels connected by arrow 1 and arrow 2 appear to be equally close to each other, while on the cortical surface we can see that they differ in their distance from each other, with pair 1 being um, further apart than, um, than pair 2. A neural network trained in the image space will, however, treat a missegmentation of pixel pair 1 and 2 equally, meaning the error will be the same. And using the new field of geometric deep learning promises to overcome these restrictions as convolutions are applied directly on the surface, where the distance information is accurately represented. Surface-based deep learning approaches, such as spherical CNNs, are, however, a rather new field, primarily focusing on classification, and in addition suffer from high computational demands and challenging definitions of the pooling and convolution operations. Um, here, in our study, we use the UGS CNN by Zhang et al., which is one of the few spherical segmentation networks published so far to perform surface-based segmentation of the human cortex. Traditional CNNs for voxel grid-based segmentation tasks, on the other hand, are already well established and have thus been optimized to a great extent over the last years. And in addition, they are much more lightweight than the spherical CNNs. And we were therefore wondering how well a parameterization network would perform in comparison to a spherical network. And that is basically our comparison between um, P-cube CNN and the spherical UGS CNN. For comparability, both networks are implemented with a consistent architecture, so for encoding decoding layers, the same loss function, equal number and dimension of convolutional kernels, batch size, and so on. And already by keeping all these parameter constants, we see that the UGS and CNN has a high computational demand of eight Titan V100 GPUs whereas the parameter approach only requires one. So potentially a spherical signal can be mapped into the image space given an effective parameterization approach, such as, for example, the mapping of the globe to a world map. However, a perfect, meaning isometric mapping between plane and sphere does not exist. Here we reduce the problem from the sphere so basically the inflated white matter surface, to a flat 2D grid via a latitude co latitude parameterization. In the end, each grid point on the image space will have a corresponding counterpart on the sphere defined by the um, angles phi and theta. Furthermore, in order to avoid singularity issues um, at the poles, we shift the corresponding angles um, by half the grid width when sampling the spherical space to the latitude co latitude grid. We can then use the parameterization to sample the signal of interest, in our case um, the curvature and thickness information, at the given coordinates on the left and right hemisphere and project it onto the 2D parameter grid. These resulting parameter space images can then be fed into a multimodal 2D deep learning segmentation architecture. Here we use free surface spherical segmentation results of five publicly available datasets to train and evaluate our models. In addition to further enforce the spherical topology, we also use appropriate padding at all borders. To this end, prior to each convolution, we on the one hand extend the left and right image borders with values from the opposing side to allow a smooth transition around the sphere basically. So um, the kernel would go out here and come back in on the other side. The vertical borders are padded by splitting the signal in half 
and mirroring about the center sideways so that we can appropriately model the transition across the poles. As mentioned before, a deformation-free mapping between sphere and 2D grid does not exist. So using a parameterization approach will always result in a non-uniform distribution of sample points. And this can in turn affect regional segmentation quality. So for example, cortical regions that are mapping to the equator, like uh, this one here for example, uh, are less densely represented than those at the poles. So in, in this representation, we have much more sample points for the region of interest. And thus, uh, segmentation accuracy may vary depending on the location of a given structure. And to elevate this problem of the differently distributed sample points, we propose to rotate the grid such that the poles are always located along a different main axis, so either the z, y, or the x axis. And then we train one network per rotation and aggregate the resulting probability maps by mapping the label probabilities of each to the original white matter spherical mesh by computing a distance weighted average of the three closest vertices on the sphere to each target vertex. And after we get the probability maps on the white matter, we then average them on a vertex by vertex basis to produce a final prediction. And because we have this view aggregation across three parameter spaces, we call this approach P cube CNN. The segmentation accuracy of the UGS CNN, the parameter space CNN, and the view aggregation approach are then compared by computing the surface-based dissimilarity coefficient in the subject space on the original brain surface, both with respect to free surfer on seven different data sets and with respect to a manual reference. Surprisingly, we see that the spherical um, CNN approach, um, like green, reaches the lowest dice across all data sets with an average of 0.76 and is already outperformed by the simple parameterization approach um, PCNN in spite of the nonlinear distortions that are induced by this latitude collatitude parameterization. And in addition, we can see that the final view aggregation first increases the segmentation accuracy and reaches the highest um, dice score on all data sets. So for, with respect to free surfer, all of them are above 0.9. And on average, we get a value of 0.93 for our view aggregation. In addition, we can also see that um, the view aggregation improves the consistency of the segmentation as the variation um, between the subjects is lower. So in total, our results show that the spherical CNNs are not yet capable of outperforming parameterization approaches despite the promise of a non-distorted operating space error. And we would therefore recommend to compare novel spherical or geometric uh, convolutional neural network approaches not only to existing geometric methods, but more importantly to view aggregating 2D segmentation networks in the spherical parameter space as a baseline. And in our current work, we are actually working on optimizing the spherical network architectures further, so to see if we can push the performance above simple parameterization approaches and fully leverage the promise of the non-distorted operating space. And in addition, we are also um, exploring other applications of the spherical CNNs, which mostly includes signals that are inherently connected to the surface. And one example would be the detection of focal cortical dysplasias, which are important in epilepsy. And um, these are characterized by a transmental stripe, which protrudes into the white matter, as well as a blurring of the gray matter, white matter border in uh, the flare image. And the idea we have is that um, we basically sample the sickness as well as intensity information at different cortical depths, which can then be used as a multimodal input to a spherical CNN to segment and detect the FCDs. Yeah, that was my talk. Thank you very much for your attention and special thanks to my PI Martin Reuter as well as the providers of the datasets.
And if you're interested, you can check out our GitHub, our Twitter and our lab page. We also have open positions, so in case you're interested, come and visit us.